Hello my gorgeous makeup loving friends. I hope you are having a fabulous day and a great start to your weekend. My name is Teresa and I love all things makeup, beauty and skincare. So every weekend I talk about the new releases in makeup that you guys want to talk about. Now I wasn't here last week because I was off in County Kerry having a little bit of a holiday. So this week is essentially two weeks worth of stuff mashed together in a very weird way. I did ask you guys if you wanted a live or whether or not you wanted the general pre-filmed thing so we went for the pre-filmed thing. However, next weekend I'm not around either. I know, isn't this dreadful? I'm speaking at a conference so I can't kind of get out of it. Uh, it's all about neuroaffirmative um, actions and behaviour analysis. Anyways, <laughs> I'm not going to be around. So on the Sunday, I was thinking we could have a live releases and rants because I know that a few people did want a live. So I'm trying to accommodate. I do have to say a massive thank you to everyone who has been tagging me in content for the last two weeks. Your names are being displayed right now. I super, super appreciate it. But I do also have to say a massive thank you to my YouTube community members. Your names are also being displayed right now. And as a general announcement, in case you guys haven't seen the community tag or post, I will be having a YouTube live with you guys on Sunday. I got some extra things um, that are part of the giveaway pile because I do like to give away things every month to my YouTube community members so I did get some extra bits that are now in the box so I will be showing you guys that but let's get into it because there are a few things to actually discuss. Rare Beauty came out with their soft pink luminous powder blush and it's available now for 31 euro in six shades. Right it is essentially kind of like an amalgamation of their kind of blushes but also their extremely popular highlighters and I saw this a while ago and I had thought it was actually just part of of their highlighter branch but obviously this is much more pigmented. This is going to be for a very particular type of person because not everyone wants a glowy blush. Now I happen to be in the realm of somebody who likes a glowy blush. I feel like maybe the six shades that they selected were a little bit too close to each other like in terms of pink pigmentation they could have definitely gone with a few that were slightly different. Like I'd love to see a pale purple. I know that they haven't got anything like that in their line so far so that could have been really really interesting. I did actually end up getting two of these. So actually what I'm gonna do is pull them out and show them to you. Cause I had already packed them away in my little drawer, I know. So I got the shades Joy and Hope, I know. I mean, let's hope I actually get some Joy and Hope. And you'll see what I mean when I say that they do look kind of similar because when Sahil opened them up, because he loves looking at my makeup, he was like, you got the same shade, you silly goats. And I was like, no, I didn't. They're a smidge apart from each other. Um, but you can see they are relatively similar. Yeah, particularly with all these lights on, you're probably gonna be like, Teresa, they look exactly the same. <laughs> you can see that this one is a little bit more pink, this is a little bit more red. Um, they are very, very pretty. Um, they're exactly as you would see with their kind of highlighters and blushes to date. I'm just swatching them on my fingers. They look really pretty. There you go. You know, they're, they're a glowy blush. What more can be said? I think this was a smart release for her because, I mean, she has gotten so much attention for her blushes, but then those highlights, I mean, Jesus Christ, they're so good. She only just extended the highlighters recently to include deeper skin tones, which I think was kind of like, what are you doing? Like that should have been part of the initial release, but there you go. She does get an awful lot of hype um, as a brand. And I, I do think the quality is there, but I'm like, if any other brand came out with like a really limited highlighter launch they you know they'd kind of be dragged a little bit and it's like she does have the capital to potentially do that anyways that's not what this is about the blushes themselves I do think they're very very pretty as I said though they're so close to each other like even the two that I got I thought that they looked different enough to each other online but now that I see them here I'm like ah oh, it's got to take a very trained eye to see kind of the distinctions there like I can kind of see it here like one is deeper than the other but it isn't that much of a difference if we're a hundred percent honest with ourselves um do I think the price tag of 31 euro is is great I mean it's not it's available now on Sephora it's on Space NK I'll have affiliate links down below etc etc I don't know I haven't heard a lot of people talking about these I got them because I mean I just I have an issue 
with blush. I love them. I love blush so, so much. Yeah, because even here on the color chart that I'm showing you guys, like Joy and Hope look like they were like distinct enough from each other that Joy was much more orange and Hope was much more pinky toned. And those are the two that I got. But even on me, they they look quite, quite similar-esque. I think they definitely needed to come out with more distinctions. Like there's a few here that if you look at them just in the pan that do look to be quite distinct from each other. I feel like essentially we had maybe three very distinct kind of blushes or blush lights, whatever it is that you want to call them. And then the rest are kind of almost like, I don't want to say pale imitations, but they're like lighter shades of that, which is fine. A lot of people will need that, but it, it does feel a little bit Mm, kind of half thought of. I definitely think she could venture into some more kind of interesting shades. Like she definitely could. We haven't seen that from her in the past. Now, obviously I was interested in this. I ended up getting it. I don't regret it because I do, I do, do think it's really, really pretty. And I personally love a glowy blush. Now, if you have any texture, etc., a glowy blush, you already know this. You're like, no, Teresa, I'm not getting a glowy blush. It's going to bring everything up that's fine. Totally get you. You're going to want a more matte sort of a blush. Now, I don't have a huge amount of texture up around my cheeks. My texture is all along my chin. My chinny chin chin. Uh, I have several chins, so <laughs> it's quite the issue. Um, but for me, I don't really mind that. And because I'm already very, very pale, I do want to get as much like glow and colour in there as possible. So this is kind of great for me. As I said, I do think they need to extend this. It'll be interesting to see what the story is. But when I put it to you guys, it did do rather well. 48% of you loved it, 33% said not for me, and 19% said that you were on a no or a low buy. Then we have one size who have a collaboration with Wicked, and I do have to make a little bit of a correction to an earlier video in which I said that I believed this was their first eyeshadow palette. Now yes, I did believe it was the first eyeshadow palette, but I was not in fact correct. They had actually done a Disney Fantasia eyeshadow palette, and I do actually remember talking about it but it was a bit for 100% honest. Anyways there was a lot that came out as part of this collection. It is available now. I know the eyeshadow palette is available through Sephora UK. The rest isn't. Interestingly the one thing that has sold out is the glitter setting spray which I think is, is quite cool. That was $32. There was the unlimited eye and face palette for $49. Now what I feel like they didn't advertise enough on this was that it's talc free which I think is really really great. I know I've said this before. We are seeing this more and more prevalent within the beauty community of going more talc free. I'm personally all for it. I think it's a really, really great movement. It means that things are potentially going to be a lot more safe, less carcinogens, hurrah, all for it. There's also the Spotlight Highlighter Luminous Powder for $34 and then the Off the Handle Complexion Brush for $34. Let's talk about the eyeshadow palette first. I do feel that the two blushes were a little bit too similar to each other in the same way as what I just said with Rare Beauty. I I feel like when you actually see them on, and particularly with the swatches, they do look super, super similar. The other thing that I have to say is, I do think it's quite fun that they showed the green arm in terms of the swatches, you know, it's, it's for the characters, grand. However, could you maybe not omit a POC to do that? It just, you know, you could have just added that on. It could have been the extra one. It, that, that's just me. The color story, it's fine, I guess. It does feel a little bit disjointed. I feel like the more alphabet section makes sense in terms of the eyeshadow. I get that. I can see the structure there. The blend of it feels a little bit more disjointed. Like there's pinks, there's blues, there's browns. Like it's a bit all over the place. It's not for me and that's totally fine. I know that there are some big, big Wicked fans out there and they really love it in which case. Fun friggin' fantastic for you. I am delighted. I will say I have a few things from one size and I really do feel like like this is a very, very strong brand in terms of quality of products. So if you like this and you were just wondering about the quality, I wouldn't feel bad about potentially recommending it even though I haven't tried it because anything I have tried from one size has been really, really good. So even though this eyeshadow palette isn't for me, that's grand. I feel like maybe the internal packaging kind of cheapens it a little bit because all I could think of was well, several different brands. Revolution, 
I know, I know, I hate saying one size and revolution in the same place because they don't have the same sort of standards and morals, etc., etc. But I also thought a little bit of um, uh, Too Faced from back in the day, you know, when they did their, their eyeshadow face palettes. Personally, I don't love mixing face and eye palettes together. That's just me. But I know that for quite a few people, that is the ideal for them. So basically, long story short, the palette isn't for me. I didn't end up picking it up. The other thing that they had was this little complexion brush. It's adorable. Let's be 100% honest, that whole thing of like the broom, cute, so, so cute. As to whether or not I feel like this would actually be a brush that I would use, I don't think so. The shape of the bristles, etc., the way the ferrules are arranged, it's not for me. I feel like I wouldn't get a huge amount of use out of it. They've It pegged as being like a complexion brush. It, it sort of looks like it's a, a duo brush because obviously there's fibres that go to one length and then there are longer ones. It's kind of strange. So I'm kind of thinking, is it meant to be something to use for like setting powder? It's all a, bit, a little bit vague as to how to use it. So for me, eh, not really. Then they have the Luminous Highlighter and eh, it's fine. It feels very, very 2016. Like there's nothing about this that necessarily makes me kind of go, oh my God, amazing. It's so beautiful. I feel like this is very much a missed opportunity. The shade itself, obviously it's only going to fit certain skin tones. I mean, I'm not even going to repeat myself at this point because I just say the same things over and over and over and over and over again. And I get tired of hearing myself. I think there's a missed opportunity here. They could have kind of gone for a really interesting highlighter that had maybe shifts between pink and gray. That could have been really, really interesting to kind of tie in both Glenda and Elphaba, but that's just me. However, however, I think they were smart to go with an actual wearable highlighter. This is a, a decent everyday like highlighter. It's not like innovative or new or out there, but I think it'll be good for like an everyday makeup user. And I think that's what Patrick was going for here. And in that case, you know what? Smart, smart. Because just because it's not for me, now I have really specific makeup tastes and leanings, it's, it's probably better. Anything that I'm into isn't exactly like a, a mainstream, <laughs> right? So he was definitely going for the more average makeup user, which smart. Honest to God, smart. I do find it really interesting that the setting spray is what sold out. Now, apparently this is quite kind of traditional, almost like a, like a hairspray in terms of the way that it feels. It's not like the wet setting spray, if that makes sense. I actually think this is kind of kind of cool, kind of interesting, expensive. I do think it's a bit of a pity that it's limited edition. There's a part of me that because I'm a 90s child and I grew up in the noughties as a teenager, I remember glitter, like body gels and stuff. So I'm like, oh, going back to a time. This makes a huge amount of sense with the characters. Like they would be using things like this on stage. So do you know what? I actually think it's really cute. I have nothing negative to say about that one. Um, like his setting spray in general is meant to be amazing. However, for whatever reason, it doesn't ship here from Sephora UK. Uh, and you know, I will continue to be salty about that. But I do think, that's actually a really smart part of the collection. So when I put it to you guys, the eyeshadow and face palette did not do well. 4% of you loved it, 62% said not for me, and 34% said never use eye and face palettes. The highlighter didn't do well, 4% love it, 73% said not for me, and 22% said that it was too expensive. The brush, weirdly enough, did quite well. 16% loved it, and 84% said not for me. And the setting spray, got a 9% love it, and a 91% not for me. We are now into another collaboration, and this time it's with Spectrum brushes and Powerpuff Girls. So essentially they came out with a whole bunch of brushes. Each of the sets have the same brushes, which are the A03 Oval Foundation, the A05, the Angled Cheek, the B08, the Brightening Brush, the B06, which is a tapered fluffy blender, the A28, a flat fluffy shader, and A25 Brow Sculpt. I do feel like those brushes are quite like, uh, not even starter brushes. They just feel very like generic. There's nothing about them that makes me kind of go, oh yeah, that's really better or interesting or worth getting. So you can get each of the three different sets. There's the Buttercup set, the Blossom set, and the Bubble set. They're 51 euro each for those six brushes. Now, personally, I think that's too expensive. I, I genuinely do. I think that's too expensive for six brushes, and particularly when they're not very interesting shapes. You can get the makeup bag for 36 euro. There's a Puff Trio set for 19 euro, which I actually think is probably the best value out of all of them. And then there's the bundle, which includes the brushes, the makeup 
makeup bag and the puff trio set and you can get them for either uh, bubbles blossom or buttercup and they're 79 euro each this is fine like it's we've had a lot of powerpuff girls collabs recently and it's apparently to do with them being 25 years old which i'm like no no because that's part of my childhood so how could it possibly be 25 years old so even though i'm turning 34 very soon i emotionally haven't gotten over the fact that i am over 25 and i like math you would think that i would understand it but no apparently not i just mm, i don't know it's not the worst collab that we've seen definitely not but also it just feels very very generic like they literally did the same brushes for each of them they, I, no thought no thought as to like maybe bubbles might like this or blossom might like this or buttercup might like this like buttercup i feel like would be a contoured b because she'd just be like yeah i want to be a badass and i feel like maybe uh, bubbles would be like really soft fluffy blushes because she'd be all into like really diffused powders and that maybe blossom would be into like you know the clean girl aesthetic do you know so she'd want like the brushes that would help her to do that <laughs> i've thought about this more than it's probably healthy personally i just feel like it's a bit mm, look the the phrase cash grab is used an awful lot and i always find it a very funny one because it's like no brand comes out with some something and kind of hopes that they make a financial loss so i feel like the phrase cash grab is always very very redundant but this just feels a bit lazy like it hasn't really been thought out in as much as it could have been Again, the fact that it's the same brushes across all three, I'm like, what have you even done? And they're not even like brushes that you'd be like, yeah, I don't mind having three or four of those. Because I, I do that. I will, if I really enjoy a brush, I'll buy it two or three times because I'm like, this is great. I'm going to be using this a lot. I do that with like my small blenders. But none of these are ones that I'd be like, oh, I'll, I'll potentially see if I can get a few of those. Maybe the angled cheek, I will say that. I'd probably get the angled cheek one the most because I would use that for like bronzer, contouring, etc. But the rest of them, I'd never really look at them and be like, yeah, I must make sure that I get several of these. So I feel like it was very like, just, oh, well, I guess we better do this but haven't really thought it through. When I showed it to you guys, the brush sets didn't do that great. It was between a 19% and a 22% love it. Because essentially the brushes were exactly the same. It just depends on which character you like. The Puff Trio actually did the best, 32% love it and 68% said not for me. And the makeup bag got a 20% love it and an 80% said not for me. Then we have Unearthly Cosmetics and this was their Spring Magic Collection. So there's the Magic Palette for 72 euro 95, the Incandescent and blush palette for 29 euro 95 there's two different liquid highlighters there's i'm sprung and awakened they're 14 euro 95 each and then there was a ghoul glaze like a lip gloss in the shade pollen for 13 euro 95 or you get the whole bundle for 129 euro 95 that is available now let's talk about maybe the palette first it's very pretty let's be real i do feel though it's almost like we're looking at two separate palettes and it needs to be edited a little bit like some of those peachy pinks I feel are a little bit like huh what's going on here I would prefer kind of maybe more greens in there I know I know <laughs> of course I want more greens Teresa loves greens so she's going to innately advocate for more greens but I feel like maybe this isn't as spring as it could be I do think like the outside artwork is quite interesting you know gulls etc but then it doesn't really reflect in the inside do you know what I mean like it's it's a little bit disjointed all that being said the swatches that they've presented look beautiful and do you see what I mean when I say that it feels like it's two separate palettes just smashed into one because even the way that they've presented the swatches I would buy those palettes separately I actually I like <laughs> <laughs> I like those and it's like Teresa the two palettes are in there in one you absolute fool but like I like the the blue and the taupiness I think that's really really nice and then the pink and the green I just love pink and green mixed together I'm basic that's what I like but something about putting all of them together it just doesn't I don't know my brain just doesn't 100% understand it 
I also feel like 73 euro is very expensive for an eyeshadow palette. Now I haven't bought anything from Unearthly Cosmetics in years. Like the last time I bought from them was when they were Alien Cosmetics. So that really does show. <laughs> it's been a long, long time. Uh, 73 euro is like the same price as, actually it's a little bit more expensive than like say a Natasha Denona palette. And I'm like, I don't know and then I'd have to pay taxes and duty so for me I just feel like it doesn't really warrant the price tag however what I do think is quite good for the price tag is the incandescent blush palette now when they initially swatched this it looked very matte but it looks like these swatches are a lot more shimmery based so I don't know what's going on but it does look very very pretty it's 30 euro I actually think that's a really really good price for six blushes so it's working out as five euro each I feel like that's the strongest item out of all of this I don't think you need to have an eyeshadow palette for every single launch look I get it they're probably the easiest thing to actually do uh, you get a decent return on them but I feel like maybe we don't need it all the time so the woman with a ridiculous number of eyeshadow palettes I do think this is really really interesting um none of those colors would necessarily work on me because I am a rejuvenated corpse so I would look a bit clownish in this and don't get me wrong I love bright fun blushes but I think this would just be overpowered on my complexion and that's fine you know this is actually going to look so gorgeous on deeper complexions and I am here for that I'm all for brands accommodating for that the liquid highlighters are fine there's nothing about them that I think is like particularly like wow I think they could have actually omitted these because yeah a peach and a green like a minty green grand fine it has been done and I feel like it has been done better is that awful to say I just don't think it's interesting also I find it really odd that when people swatch like anything that's for the cheek like and I'll say this about the blushes as well they'll build it up to a certain opacity and I'm like but none of us are gonna wear it that way could you show it maybe diffused on the cheek so that we know what it looks like I I'm not saying get rid of these swatches completely but maybe just show how it looks on different skin tones actually applied I personally love that I do think actually the lip gloss is really really pretty there's sort of like glittery particles in there it's 13 euro 95 it's not the most expensive but I will say it isn't really for me I don't know I I just find that unearthly have been doing a lot of stuff recently and I get a bit a bit fatigued if I'm 100% honest when a brand is like launching a lot of stuff I kind of feel a bit overwhelmed None of these are necessarily for me. That's not a bad thing. I will say though, when I put it to you guys, it did do pretty well. The blush palette was pretty popular. 34% said love it. 40% said not for me. 25% said that you would prefer them as individual blushes. The eyeshadow palette did pretty okay. 37% said love it. 43% said not for me. 20% said on a no or a low buy. But I showed you the liquid highlighters and the gloss. 23% said love it. 70% said not for me. And 7% said that you were on a no or or a low buy. Another indie brand and this time it's Dandelion Cosmetics. This palette is called The Feeding Frenzy and it is launching April 6th for $50 which I actually think is a really really good price for an indie brand. Now what they've said is that this will be available first the palette and they're gonna have between 90 and 100 units because they are a small indie brand and they said that eventually they're gonna have singles and pan only bundles after the initial launch. So if you're just looking at this and kind of going I like this shadow or I like this shadow don't get the palette straight away way because you could actually just buy the singles. I really really like this and um, I remember Dandelion Cosmetic as a brand for the last couple of years and they've been selling a lot of like bundles of eyeshadows and they haven't been doing that many eyeshadow palettes but it's really fun to see them do this and I feel like even the cover is really really cute. They've done really really well. There's something it reminds me a little bit of Tammy Tanuka you know the inspired by sigil like the outside of it and I say that with the biggest of compliments because I think they're absolutely stunning. They showed some swatches. Oh my god, I love this. I think this is absolutely stunning. There's a really nice mix of like your yellow toned greens and then your more bluey toned greens and then there's elements of like kind of greyness. 
I oof, love this. Now, obviously, the, the bit that I don't love is that because they're such a small brand, and I'm not going to critique them on this, they don't have any swatches on deeper skin tones. I mean, obviously, they don't have the resources for this, but I would be looking forward to seeing what this looks like on deeper skin tones. I think this is really, really pretty. And for $50, you are getting 12 shadows. That's working out as a little bit over $4 per eyeshadow. It's very, very pretty. Do I need it? I absolutely don't. I, I don't, but I think that if you're in the market for something like this, this could be really, really good. Now, I've never tried anything from Dandelion Cosmetics, so I can't even kind of give you any information on that, I'm afraid, isn't that terrible? But if you guys have, could you comment down below? I would find that super, super helpful. I know a lot of you other guys would find it super, super helpful. There's a shade there up near the, the top. It's the third from the top. And I actually think that would look beautiful as a highlighter. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I actually think it's, it's beautiful. It's done so, so well. It does look to be quite matte heavy. So if you have a preference towards matte, that's gonna be great for you. It's swatch as well. I'd love to know how many like turns over they've had to do to get that. But the pigmentation looks really really good i like this yes it's a monochromatic palette have we seen a monochromatic palette a million times before yeah yeah but when it's done well it's done well what can you say i do like it i think it is very very pretty when i put it to you guys 24 percent of you loved it 69 percent said not for me and seven percent said that you're on a no or a low buy this next one is unfortunately sold out i have no idea as to whether or not they're bringing it back i hope that they do because the last time that they had a collab was with jennifer coolidge and that did so well they had to restock it if you don't know this is the liquid death corpse paint vault it launched sometime last week for $34 and it had a bunch of their existing products but in slightly different packaging and oh my god I don't know if you guys saw the ad for it <laughs> no more than the Jennifer Coolidge ad for the, their collab it was amazing like Elf are kind of killing it in terms of their marketing and their advertising like if you looked at their whole crime investigation ad and then compared that to the Charlotte Tilbury it was like which one of you guys is a high end anyways I think this was really really interesting as part of the set they had the matte magic mist and set the kiss of death which is an existing O face satin lipstick in all night their eye dye which is a no budge cream eyeshadow in wispy cloud a deadline h2o proof eyeliner pen the brush with death which is a putty applicator brush and they basically then had this closed casket reusable coffin keepsake box so as i said it's all existing products which i think is really really smart because people can then make a really informed choice as to whether or not they want it because they can look at the reviews and kind of say oh i want this or i don't want this 34 dollars for five full-size products which fantastic and i mean I have to say this looks so incredibly expensive like the black packaging if you told me that this was Ilamasca that it was KVD I'd be like good for them that looks nice that looks sleek it does it you couldn't tell me that this was a budget drugstore brand I, I'm just gonna say I think it looks really really looks I, I do think that they, they, they need to restock it right there's a load of people that really wanted it it sold out so fast they didn't really give any preemptive information that <laughs> this is happening and that it was just there i do feel like the collaboration itself with the brand of liquid death was a bit strange i didn't even know what it was it's apparently like carbonated water mineral water thing whatever i don't personally like fizzy water it's a sensory thing but there's teas like or something i don't know i like hot tea to brew we don't we don't drink these things cold in ireland or at least i don't however I do appreciate that they have a really good sense of humour. Um, I feel like this was good for both of the brands. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, just really, really well put together. Very tongue-in-cheek. The whole aesthetic of it is great. I, I mean, uh, no notes really, lads. Like, this was done well. All of these things you could see getting really good juice out of. Like, a black lipstick. <sighs> You know me lads, I love a black lipstick. I don't get to wear it that often, but there you go. The the setting mist, the, even the brush looks really, really nice. Everyone needs a black eyeliner. I will go to my grave thinking that. And even that um, white eyeshadow, you could use that as a potential like base for your eyeshadow. All in all, just done so, so well. They need to bring it back. They do, they really, really do. Yes, I know you can get each of these items individually. Yes, 
that is not the issue. I think just even the way that they've packaged things is just so good. Elf, could you maybe have a look at this packaging long term? Because it is so pretty. It's so luxe. Uh, not that I am against their packaging as it is, but I'm like, you've shown us that you can do this. This is absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, it just sold out like that. It was bananas. When I showed it to you guys, 29% of you loved it, 51% said not for me, and 20% said that you like some of it. Now we're on to Anastasia Beverly Hills, and we have a couple of things, actually. They launched a lot of stuff in the last fortnight. First thing we're talking about is their Beauty Balm Serum Boosted Skin Tint. That is quite the mouthful. 47 euro. It is so expensive, and there's 16 shades. They're trying to justify this by saying that they have eight skincare ingredients, and that includes HA Plus Microspheres, which apparently help to smooth fine lines and wrinkles, peptide complex which helps to deliver youthful skin, fatty acids, collagen stabilizer, coconut oil, shea butter, marula oil and jojoba seed oil. They say they're free of phthalates, mineral oil, talc, sulfates, paragons and fragrance which I think is, is great. Uh, again I've said this before I'm happy to see that happening a little bit more. They say that it's the first of its kind tinted solid serum which to be fair is unusual. Normally with a serum it's liquid so the fact that this is solid it is quite unusual. It's a sheer to light coverage. So it is essentially like a beauty balm. That's what they've marketed it as. 47 euro, very, very expensive. And the other thing that I want to talk about is shade. On the surface of it, if you tell me 16 shades for a beauty balm, I'll go, yeah, that sounds about right. Cause like it's light coverage. So you don't need to think so much about undertones, etc. It's just meant to kind of even things out, right? So you don't need to have 40 shades, that's fine. Make sure that you cover the deep, the very deep, the medium, the light the fair right you're grand you, you could do that in 16 to 20 shapes but oh my god <laughs> What have they done? Like they have a bunch of stuff for the light shades, which I actually don't think they needed to do that at all. So a lot of those shades look very, very similar. And it's like they basically got halfway there. And do, do, have you ever tried to print out a document and it's, it's halfway printed and then the rest of the sheet comes out blank? That's what this is giving me. I'm like, I feel like we've only gotten half of this. Where's the rest? From any other brand, actually, do you know, I wouldn't accept this from any brand, but Anastasia Beverly Hills, come on now. You are an established brand. You have the capital. What are you doing? This is bizarre because even though it's going to give you light to sheer coverage, you still need to have something that's like a base. If you are a person of color, you're going to struggle. If you're beyond medium skin tone, you're, you, I'm sorry, but it, you're getting nothing there. And I don't understand in this day and age how they're doing this. Like I'll show you the deepest color here. And like, it looks okay on the model, like beautiful model, let's be real. But there are people who have deeper skin tones. So what are you doing? Like, I just don't get it. And I'll also, I'll also show you the fairest person as well. Like I said, they've done very well in including people of a fairer skin tone. Could, could It's not that much effort. It really isn't, I don't understand this this drives me nuts the other thing that i'll say is <laughs> this just makes me think of you know the the roll-up colognes or deodorants i don't know what to say about it it just looks cheap and for 47 euro for 47 euro look i get that they're being all like yeah this is this is a stick but there's other ways that you could potentially present this why did they have to present it in this way it just looks so tacky i don't I don't like this at all. I can't really think of many redeeming features other than the whole thing of being cruelty free, vegan, uh, they don't have mineral oils, talcs, etc. I think that bit is great. We've said that there's going to be a lot more in makeup looking at embodying or embedding some more skincare in. This is kind of proof of that. It's grand. But 47 euro, absolutely not no that's on the same price point as the house labs foundation which has skincare in it as well and gives you coverage and is actually inclusive in their shade range no absolutely not scrap it Anastasia scrap it G go away <laughs> Go away with this nonsense. I don't understand it. Because when I read it initially and it said 16 shades, I was like, yeah, that sounds right, right for a beauty band. <laughs> and I looked at it and I was like, what? <laughs> they, they have put the same shade down five times. What are you doing? I, I don't understand this. 
it's made me feel a little bit twitchy and I don't want to talk about it anymore. When I put it to you guys, 26% of you loved it, 61% said not for me, and 13% said that you were on a no or a low buy. Then ABH also outlined that they were coming out with a cosmic collection and they kind of sneak peeked it in an email and then they just launched it the other night. It is pricey. We have some very, very expensive items and it's essentially just three different products but in five shades that are all complementing each other. There's the Ethereal Eye Gloss, five shades, 30 euro each. The Space Dust Powder, again, five shades, 30 euro each. And then there's the Lip Glosses, again, five shades, 23 euro each. Now they look absolutely stunning. They do look so pretty, but the price, oh my God, like my brain cannot fathom them. I do like them. I do think they're quite pretty. Shall we talk about the eye glosses first? These are obviously not super pigmented in terms of color. They are meant to be a gloss for your eye. Now, as an old woman, as a crone, <laughs> I have hooded eyelids as well. So this would just, I feel like this is for the younger generation. And maybe this is what ABH are trying to do is try and get in a younger consumer. You know what? Fair enough. Totally get it. They're also trying to do bundles with this with their Cosmos eyeshadow palette, which by the way, if you don't have it, it is very, very pretty. I would recommend it. It's grand. Like it looks okay. I've seen people using it online. Again, don't understand why they show swatches on an arm for something like a gloss. Yes, I know it's an eyeglass, but I need to see it on the actual eye. Now I did see somebody show a video over on TikTok and they put down a black base where you could really see the actual pigment that little bit better. And they had like no black base as well uh, on top and they kind of blended it out, I guess, to, to show you what it looks like on skin itself versus on a black base. And obviously it shows up an awful lot more on a black base. I'm not wildly interested in this just because essentially my my skin won't allow me to have it. It's gonna crease like crazy on me. I think this is great for younger people. However, 30 euro, really, really expensive. I, I don't know, everything's, I've, I, every week I say this, I think they're increasing in price. Yeah, they are, Teresa. We're, we're heading towards the end. Like, it's a bit ridiculous. I am interested in the glasses. I do think they look really, really pretty. They're the cheaper, if we can even call it that. They're 23 euro. Again, they come in the complimentary shades. I think they're really nice. I do wish that they showed them on the lip. Again, I don't understand why you swatch them on the arm. How is that helpful? It isn't, because it's giving me absolutely no context. They do look lovely. Again, I think this could look really, really pretty on a bare lip for just that little wash of color. Could be great to color correct. You know, if you've like a lipstick that you think is maybe too warm leaning, you could put like the bluer gloss on top to maybe lean it in a particular way. It could look beautiful on a black lipstick. I'm all for that. And I've heard good things about the ABH lip gloss formula. The only lip products I had from ABH were their liquid lipsticks. And when I tell you, I hated them with a passion, like nothing drier. But I mean, it's a lip gloss, it can't be dry. <laughs> If it did, that would be an actual miracle in and of itself. Although miracle denotes like something positive, that wouldn't be positive. Anyways, I do think those are really, really nice. Do I need them? No. Would I think about getting them? Unfortunately, yes. The other thing that I do think is really interesting are the space dust highlighter powdery things like they look nice do I feel are they a bit late to the game on this one yeah yeah I, I do because they're coming out with duochrome reflex how many indie brands have been doing this for a really really long time to manage to actually name but do you know what for most people who are very mainstream they won't have come across this so this will be really cool and interesting for them it's a swatched on the arm it doesn't look that interesting same comment as previously please show it to me on the face they do look nice, they do look interesting, but you know what? I could go to my Blend Bunny Not Delucent palette and get an awful lot of these shades. I can go to any one of my indie brands that have done more duochrome highlight, for instance, Kaleidos have a few. Um, even She Glam had a few. So I don't think I would necessarily need this. I think this will probably be great for people who are a little bit more textured. It might work out great for them. It'll probably look beautiful on the eye as well. But I personally just don't feel comfortable with signing off on that sort of a price. When I showed these to you guys, the eyeglasses were not very popular. 18% of you loved it. 77% said not for me. 5% said on a no or a low buy. The highlighters did OK. 
okay, 21% said love it, 71% said not for me, and 8% said you're on a no or a low buy. The glosses, again, were very uh, okay received, but nothing like major. 18% of you loved it, 79% said not for me, and 3% were on a no or a low buy. Then we have Win Beauty, W-Y-N, which is Serena Williams' brand. Now, it isn't fully her brand. I have to say a massive thank you to Sue. If you've watched my channel for any period of time, you will know that I've mentioned Sue a few times, because Sue is a makeup sleuth, and she finds out information for me, and she's so wonderful with sharing that information. But she found an article that outlined that basically this is a brand under Glow Glam, which has its origins in India, which I think is quite interesting. So it, this isn't an independently owned brand. She has got financial backing from them. So I know a few people were wondering about that and it kind of makes sense because yes, Serena probably has an awful lot of money between like the, the very many um, publicity things that she's done advertisements. But I will say that women in sports do not get paid as much, they're very undervalued. Uh, and women in tennis in particular, there was a thing maybe five or six years ago that showed the major pay discrepancy between females and males. So I actually get that she probably doesn't have as much money as everyone probably thinks she does, even though she is a fucking champion, a literal champion. Um, so it makes sense that she's got financial backing to do this. And you know what, if you wanna do it right, Fair enough, because there's a lot in this. I wanna talk first about maybe the concealers because there's 20 shades, they're $25. It's apparently a, a matte sort of a formula. Shade range, shade range. Oh my God, we just talked about Anastasia Beverly Hills and their ridiculous one. And then here's Win Beauty out of the gates and, and here's some actual decent sort of coverage. Do I think they could add in a shade or two here or there? Yeah, probably, but you know what? Pretty damn good. It's meant to have a couple of different ingredients in there to help with hydration so I assume some sort of a hyaluronic acid and there's also some botanical complexes to help with skin's texture I mean I'm not against that I think that the addition of the green kind of components or caps is quite smart it links in with Wimbledon with tennis etc I know it's not going to be for everyone and a few people actually kind of said it reminds me of Made by Mitchell and you know what once that was pointed out to me I can't unsee it but I'm I'm intrigued. I think the price point is pretty darn good, like $25 for a concealer. This is gonna come to Ulta apparently sometime soon, um, April 7th. So as you're watching, it'll be available tomorrow. Because <laughs> I do put this out on a Saturday, but if you're watching this after that, then well, do the math yourself. I think this is actually pretty darn good. And I want to talk then about this skin tint. So it's a skin enhancing tint, which has an SPF of 30, $29. And there are 36 shades. Again, move over ABH, look at this. Look at this shade range. The shade 540, look at how fabulously deep that is. And then the shade 15, very, very pale. I think they've done this really, really well. They've actually thought about the different undertones. The price point, excellent, really, really good. I'd love to see what the story is in terms of of ingredients, like what sort of actives they have in it. Do they have any actives? Again, SPF is in it, but you all know if you want to have actual sun protection, a skin tint isn't going to be enough because to actually get the amount of coverage that you would need, you'd have to basically pour out like a big chunk of that bottle. So you're, you're gonna wanna add on stuff to it, but no harm in having extra. I think that's what most people do with these. Then they also have two different lipsticks and it's not really clear which ones are which, but they have 10 different shades. And they're really affordable as well because they are $20 each. There's the Word of Mouth Max Comfort Matte Lipstick and then there's the Say Everything Max Intensity Featherweight Lipstick. So it's not really clear what they mean by featherweight. Is it meant to be more of like a satin or what's going on here? But $20, 10 shades, they're very, very pretty, but they also then have their MVP, Most Versatile Pigment, Multifunction Lip and Cheek Color in eight shades for $21. And as you're watching, that's by the way, the picture in the middle. I'm so interested in the shade Go because it's very, very unusual. It's almost like a contoury shade. And I, I'm kind of here for it. It's very taupey. Really, really interesting. Straight out with the gate, the fact that she's come out with all of this very early on. By the way, th these are all the pictures that I could source, but we know that there's other bits because apparently she's also coming out with a tubing mascara. Fair enough. There's a lip serum for $18. The mascara, by the way, is $19. 
There's a brown shaping pencil in three shades for $19, a waterproof liquid eyeliner for $21, and a Glide Line Longwear eye pencil for $19. I have to say, that's a massive, massive collection to actually launch with, so it makes sense that she got that financial backing. But I'm pretty impressed with the inclusivity, um, but you know what? That's what you see with POC brands. <laughs> if you want brands, if you want, if you want like a product that has pigment that is inclusive, that is considerate of all undertones, you go to a POC brand. They do it better. That's just end of. If you look at some of the best, that that's what the story is. I think this is quite interesting. Um, it's not going to be easily available for me. I'd love to know, those of you who are in the US and you're able to get to Ulta, will you let me know what the story is, if you can grab this, if you are swatching it in store? Because I do think this is quite interesting. Yes, I know there were a few people that were kind of going cash grab. Yeah, of course it is. But here's the thing, she can only play tennis for so long. And as I said, women in tennis have been horrifically underpaid. And she spent her entire life playing tennis like to to go from that retired athletes usually don't do well psychologically because it's very very difficult for them so I actually think her going into business is probably going to be a really really great uh offset for her I know people were kind of saying like oh she's never shown an interest in beauty yeah but she probably was never asked those questions in interviews like you know um like, I don't know her personally. Maybe she has, like, a massive interest in makeup. So you know what? More power to her. Uh, it's going to be something that is going to generate jobs. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. When I put it to you guys, 8% of you loved the concealer. 70% said not for me. 22% said that you're going to wait for reviews when I showed you the skin tints. 6% said love it. 67% said not for me. And 28% said that you were impressed with the shade range. When I showed you the multifunction lip and cheek tints, 17% of you loved it. 75% said not for me. And 8% said that you're on a no or a low buy. And when I showed you the two different lipstick formulas, 26% said love it. 71% said not for me and 3% said that you were on a no or a low buy so it seems like the lip products are going to be the most popular for her. Then we have Natasha Denona who came out with her high gen skincare infused glow beautifier just this week. There's four shades and they are, sit down, 55 euro each. They're so expensive. Full disclosure, I bought one. I justified it because I had like built up a couple of points on my Natasha Denona account so I was like I will get this and even with $20 off when I brought in shipping it was like 43 euro so I feel <laughs> ridiculous but also I wanted this so there you go. I enjoy Natasha Denona but I personally feel like she's kind of been coming out with a bit too much it's been a lot now all that being said you don't just come out with this like a spur of the moment this is something that has obviously been in the works for quite some time so there you go. Part of why I got this was it's talc free you know my love of this and I feel like it would be a really really great sort of an everyday day highlighter. They say it encapsulates the luminosity of her cutting edge high gen primer serum. I always find those phrases really interesting. It goes into the Charlotte Tilbury thing of like, oh my award winning, blah blah blah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I get it. You're, you're very proud of yourself. Fantastic. But it is a talc free all over face glow powder. So it's a bit like, you know, the MAC Mineralize, which is not a bad thing. I think that's actually really, really great. So you can use it as like a multifunctional highlighting bouncy powder. But there's apparently a little bit of like a gel component to it which is really really interesting to me. They did say clinically proven test results on 20 volunteers over 28 days which by the way they say increases skin hydration, improves skin moisturization, reduces the appearance of all pores. Guys you know what I think of this. I go a little bit bananas when people are saying things like this because it's like that is a terrible sample size. You need to do some sort of a randomized control trial. Anyways I'm not going to get into that. I think that's a bit what Whatever. However, when you look at this on the models, it does look so pretty. Now, if you want a blinding, get out of my way, see me from space highlighter, this is not going to be it for you. The, put it down, take it out of your basket. You don't need it. You really, really don't. And I say this as somebody who is a fucking affiliate of the brand. Like, I have a code, you get your money off, blah, 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 down in the link, whatever. But if you are looking for a blinding highlighter that's really interesting in terms of of its 
its tones, this is not going to be it for you. Put it down, don't even bother. However, if you're looking for the sort of a highlight that is very like natural, glowy, glass skin, I hate that phrase, but dewy, you, you, healthy, I don't know what that means, but if you're looking for that, this is probably going to be the product for that. However, 55 euro, whew, don't get it straight away. Have a little look for it, like reviews. You know the story there, lads. Try and find somebody who's like super, super impartial. I did end up getting one. Um, I got obviously the lightest one. I feel like, yeah, they went for four shades and they're fairly okay. Maybe they could have had like maybe one extra dark one, but even in saying that, it does look like it's quite dark. So I'm not gonna whinge to them about that because it feels like a little bit of an unnecessary one. Oh, it's just the price, lads, 55 euro, like 55 euro, 55, 55 euro. <laughs> like my brain, it's just like, it, and it's what now? It, it's what? And I can't even complain because I ended up getting it. I'm going to wait by the door after this for this to arrive. And I swear to God, lads, it had better change my fucking life. But I will say, anything that I have tried from Natasha, I do love and I, I do enjoy. Do I think it'll necessarily do all those things of like increasing skin hydration, improving skill moisturization? I don't think so. I don't. Because, and let me explain to you for why. You're going to be putting on so little of this and you already have a bunch of stuff on your face already. This is gonna be one of the last things that goes down. So it's gonna take a lot for it to penetrate the skin barrier to get that sort of an effect. So I don't know how much of this is just sheer placebo effect, which, you know, grand. I do love though that it's talc free. I'm really, really here for that. Um, I'm here for the innovation uh, and it's apparently made in Italy, right? And if you know anything about like highlighters, etc., any time, that something comes out of Italy and is a highlighter, it is going to change your life. <laughs> this is kind of reminding me a little bit of the Dior uh, face palettes, you know, the highlighters. I actually have one as a giveaway uh, for my YouTube members, but it kind of, I feel like you'll, you'll get a similar finish to that. So, you know, you know, there are other alternatives that are similar in price, but you'll get more stuff with it. But this is, to be fair, it's an all over face powder. I, yeah, I mean, I've already said it, I've bought it. <laughs> Does anyone care? Does anyone want me to like talk about it? Do, do you want a video on it? Do you want me to do a first impressions? Because I'll find time to do it at some point because my life is still very busy, but I will try. Um, It looks beautiful on all of the models. Let's be 100% honest. I, yeah, I was kind of sold on that. It It just looks very like, like you're moisturized and that you're healthy <laughs> which i'm like oh i love that i love that for me yeah it wasn't very popular for you guys though and i don't blame you particularly with the price 18 percent of you loved it 63 percent said not for me and 18 percent said that it was too pricey we are now heading into some nostalgia this is mac and their disney collection and if this looks familiar to you it is because they're essentially bringing back their 2010 2015 and 2019 collections respectively so there's the venomous villains the cinderella and the aladdin the aladdin collection was the most recent one and they've brought this back to essentially celebrate 40 years of mac disney and i think it's quite smart that they've brought back stuff that has existed before so people can kind of maybe restock what they had i i love it i think it's actually kind of cute now do i want all of it absolutely not right a lot of this stuff isn't my necessary aesthetic but i think it's smart for them to bring back stuff that has been tried and tested that people can look at reviews they can make informed decisions it just means that a lot less is going to be in landfill essentially and people can replace the stuff that they've used up which i think is is very very smart so let's talk about maybe the venomous villains first so that's the maleficent one so there's the mineralized eyeshadow duo in she who dares and that's 25 pounds and i did have somebody message me saying they still had theirs from the original collection back in 2010 and i'm like oh, you have history that's amazing that shade looks so cool it, it is the most maleficent looking shade it's amazing that is definitely on my list i really actually do you know what the whole venomous villains maleficent collection i love it i think it's really really cool there's also the amplified lipstick in dark deed for 25 pounds and again even the bullet is just so pretty it's so sleek maleficent is on it it's such a cool vampy whiny burgundy you know it's a proper villain color like it looks fantastic but then 
also then have the lip gloss in wrong spell for £22 and I feel like that would look so beautiful on top of the lipstick as well. This uh, is just really well done. I'm glad that they brought that back because when this came out in 2010 I was in college doing my undergrad so no way did I have money to spend anything on MAC but ah uh, if this comes to boots or look for that. If this comes to anywhere where I can buy it online, I will get it. I think this is a really cool. I could actually buy it on MAC Cosmetics UK. Oh, I may do that. I don't need it, but apparently it is limited stock. So if you do really want it, maybe get it sooner rather than later. Then the next one is the Cinderella collection. The palette is Stroke of Midnight. It's £35. That's very, very expensive for a six pan eyeshadow palette. It's quite basic, which actually, do you know what? For Cinderella, makes sense. I don't mean any, you know, disrespect to, to the lady, but she wasn't exactly, you know, breaking things. Now the shadow palette in and of itself, I actually, I don't hate it, right? It's it's grey toned, very taupey. I think it's quite nice. And I, I, that's as much as I can say about it. Do I think it warrants the price tag of £35? No, but I think it's extremely wearable. And I think that if you bought this as a collector, you would actually end up using it because it is very like everyday. It, it was a smart choice for them. The lipstick then is the Luster Glass in Royal Ball. That's £25. And this is much too peachy toned for me. I personally don't like this. Again, that, that's just a me thing. I think it's maybe with my undertone and colouring. Uh, it just isn't for me. The packaging, again, 10 out of 10. Absolutely gorgeous. Then the last thing that they have as part of this collection is the pigment in Pretty It Up for £20. And apparently this is meant to be very, very pretty. There's like, kind of like a, a taupiness to it, but it looks quite nice on the eyes. Do I need it? Absolutely not. So I'm not going to get it. But I think it's very, very smart. And then the very last collection that they have is the Aladdin one. And I do actually remember talking about this when it came out initially. There's the Jasmine's Wish palette for £35. Again, it's very, very safe. I actually don't think this is a very good representation of Jasmine herself. It's just a bit like, hmm, you know, it, it could definitely use a lot more colour. But again, I think they're going with the safe thing of this is what the average user would like to have. Then there's the matte lipstick in Princess Incognito for £25. I do think that is actually extremely pretty. And the bullet is gorgeous. The gold with that turquoise sort of print on it. Absolutely stunning. Such a beautiful collector's item. And then there's a complimentary lip gloss in Jewels on Jewels for £22. And again, I actually think that looks beautiful. There's a little bit of almost like glitteriness to it. And it looks so, so beautiful. I think the packaging on this, particularly with the lip stick and the lip gloss is like 20 out of 10. It looks absolutely stunning. Yeah, it's really interesting to almost see this over time that the 2010 collection was just so interesting, the Venomous Villains, and then you move on and it gets a little bit more safe over time. So you can almost see the evolution or de-evolution of MAC over time. And to me, very interesting. When I showed it to you guys, you were on the same boat as me. The Venomous Villains was your jam. 42% of you loved it, 45% said not for me. 12% said that you wish there was a palette as part of this and I do agree. Then the Cinderella one, 15% love it, 82% said not for me, 3% were on a no or a low buy. The Aladdin collection, 5% of you loved it, 92% said not for me, and 3% of you said that you were on a no or a low buy. Feel free to disagree with me, but I feel like Beauty Bay has very limited success when it comes to items outside of eyeshadow palettes, because I never really hear people talking about the other items that they offer, but they are still trying, and you know, God loves a trier. So they came out with their new liquid highlighters. There's three shades, they're six milliliters, they're nine pounds each, or you can bundle the three for 20 pounds. They come in the shades Quartz, which is a soft rose gold shade, Disco, an iridescent pink and gold shade, and Pearl, a creamy champagne gold shade. What can I really say about this? I feel like this is very, very dated. Liquid highlighters aren't as popular as they once were. I also feel like these shades are extremely generic. Like anyone who's really into makeup probably already has these shades. I think the only one that's in any way kind of interesting is Disco, because there's that slight pinkish hue to it. I also feel like it's a decent dupe-esque. <laughs> of the Vision Flush Liquid Glow in uh, Femme, which is by Danessa Myricks. It looks nice on the models. I just feel like this is a bit random and also not very inclusive in terms of their shade range. It seems to be very, very pale leaning. I think they needed to have at least one more extra deep shade in there to kind of have it be very, very inclusive because all of those shades are going to work very well on a paler skin tone, but anyone with a deeper skin tone is going to really struggle with this. 
I haven't seen many people talk about it and I think it's just that outside of their eyeshadow palettes and it's nothing to do with the, the quality actually the quality of their stuff is great but I feel like people just don't get very very excited about them I also feel like liquid high highlighters have had their day and people don't really they're not as into them as they once were which is fine I think people are more into like maybe like creams or gels or sometimes even like powders I feel like maybe the liquid highlighters are a little bit more dated but this didn't seem to get a huge amount of attention it just kind of launched and then it was like okay it's done now bye okay thanks farewell and I don't know I feel like maybe 10 euro because that's what it is in euros is a bit expensive for what it is like Elf came out with their liquid highlighters that have were essentially duping, <laughs> of course, Charlotte Tilbury. And that's a similar price point, you know? So I think that at this point, everyone has those. So it feels a little bit like, why did you do that? You know? They, they, they're they also probably going to leave this for a really long time. We're not going to see any extensions to this for maybe two years because they've done this with products before. I, I don't know I love Beauty Bay I think their quality is really really good but I think that this particular release is just a bit like why why did you bother nobody really needs this it's it's unnecessary I will say when I put it to you guys a lot of you seem to be thinking the exact same thing because 20% of you loved it 55% said not for me and 25% said that it needed more shade and the very last thing that we're actually discussing is Bella B. Bar, and they revealed their secret garden it's a magnetic 25 pan eyeshadow and pressed pigment palette so of course they're saying eyeshadow and pressed pigment because you know we have to be very very clear in terms of articulating these particular things as to what's eye safe etc this is coming out sometime mid-April we don't have a price yet but I think this is a reimagining of like an older palette of theirs um I would suspect it's going to be around like the 60 dollar ish mark now Bella B. Tabar have come out with an awful lot of products lately I feel like it's maybe one eyeshadow palette every six weeks which is a lot a lot for an indie brand personally I feel like it's a little bit too much because I, I get a bit overwhelmed they don't seem to have any issue in terms of the quality of their products like anything that I've had I've really really enjoyed so so it's not like they're overproducing uh, a detriment to the quality of the product like so th that's great but I, I know that a lot of people when it comes to indie brands they love to collect them but it becomes very very difficult when you're doing an awful lot of launches you know what I mean that's the main critique I have on that but the palette itself is actually very very pretty there's definitely shades in there that I think are lovely it's a fabulous companion for their pastel garden uh, which came out about a year ago I would say so I feel like you could mix and match across this because obviously you can take it out you can uh, mesh them around I personally wouldn't do that because then the names wouldn't line up I know I have issues it's a whole thing I do wish that the greens that are there I wish they were a little bit more yellow toned but I get why they're more blue toned because they have the blues there as well it kind of synchronizes in an awful lot better with the pinks because pink obviously has a, a, an element of blue in there so I think they went for something that would make an awful lot of sense there but I would almost like a green that is yellow in tone to contrast against that so I, I feel like maybe that was a little bit missing but that's just for me I love that they have the row at the very top that is very neutral leaning that you could get an everyday sort of a look out of and then the rest is all very um, colourful and fun decent amount of depth I do think though that they probably needed a few extra dark shades in there because like the darkest shades that we have are down at the very very bottom I think that maybe like an extra shade in there might have been helpful all that being said though if you have a decent black mat you should be okay I think it's very very nice I love mixing pinks and greens together I just think that they tend to be just disgustingly beautiful it's why I like lost my mind over the Lois Cosmetics Underworld palette when it came out back in the day and I still love that palette it's still a, a favorite of mine um I suppose this depends on the price it is coming out mid-April so we'll see but I think it's it's really very very pretty um I have a few things from Bella B. Tabar so I do like their quality and I believe they were saying that they're like they've made efforts to reformulate personally I love when a brand is trying to do that because it shows that they're actually 
like trying to keep on top of things and not just like phoning it in. So I think that is great. When I put it to you guys, this did really, really well. 43% said that you loved it, 48% said not for me, and 10% said that you were on a no or a low buy. But my gorgeous friends, that is it. It was such a long episode. I know I did try to squash in two weeks worth of stuff and just the highlights, none of the like extra bits that I found along the way because I was like, oh my God, we would be here for five years and nobody wants that. But thank you so much for watching. I super appreciate I do have my favourite comment and this is from Gillian who said I hope you have a fabulous time in Kerry please relax and enjoy the break that's an order and I, I listened to that order Gillian I did um, I won't say that I relaxed massively if you watched my Instagram you would know that I was a natural in the wild just amazing careening across mountains uh, I'm I'm like I'm like a, a mountain goat frankly in, in the way that I'm able to uh, traverse across the terrain of Kerry <laughs> if you know you know um but as I said next weekend I am at a conference I am speaking on a Saturday morning I know so I won't have time to edit and put stuff up because I'm at the conference on Friday and Saturday so there you go but I was thinking I could do a live with you guys on Sunday because some people did want a live. So we'll do maybe a live on Sunday if you guys are interested. I'll probably have it at like one o'clock so that we can like relax and also I want to have a sleep in. So yeah. Anyways, my gorgeous friends, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Do please like, comment and subscribe. All that general jazz, it really does help. And do please share because sharing is caring, except of course for STDs, in which case just wrap it up. Don't be gross. But that's it. That's the end of the video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.